So I can think of two special cases. There may be more. Um, and actually, the second one doesn't apply to my current students at New Haven, at least in the curriculum. We're not going to ask you about the second one. So once I finish the first one, I slide over and you, you see two and another example. Then you can just cut it off unless you want to understand and learn a little bit more. But we're not going to ask you a question about it. So here's the first special case. And at first glance or first blush or whatever you want to say, um, this looks like just a rational function and it's the situation where m is greater than n. So I can find out the vertical asymptotes by saying, well, x minus 3 equals 0. 1 is the denominator equals 0. And say that it occurs at x equals 3. And then do the actual division and get x squared minus x minus 6 divided by x minus 3 gives me um, x, so that's x squared minus 3x. Remember, I'm subtracting, and so this becomes 0 plus 3x, so I get 4x minus 6, and I get plus 4, and so I get, um, okay, that's not working out the way I thought it was going to work out. I did something wrong. Oh, plus, so this is 2, doofus. Let's do all that over again. And so you're going to figure out now by doing the actual division, because this is the situation where m is greater than n. Okay, and then we can also then look at the exponents, and we see that this is the situation where m is greater than n. So I actually have to do the division to sort out what the horizontal or slant asymptote is as it works out x squared minus x minus 6 and so uh, I'm gonna change colors and go uh, have to multiply this x times that x to get x squared and I get minus 3x remember we're subtracting so this becomes x squared minus x squared which is 0 and negative x plus 3x which gives us positive 2x bring down the 6 negative 6 excuse me and then I have to multiply this times 2 to make this 2x and then minus 6, and I get no remainder. Awesome. So uh, I get this x minus 3, x plus 2, and so my slant asymptote is, of course, x plus 2, right? y equals x plus 2. Well, here's the problem. This remainder of 0, we're so used to getting remainder of zeros and being happy about it, and we don't think about it. In this particular case, this is a situation where I get this remainder of 0. That means that this x minus 3 divided into this polynomial, as the textbook says, evenly, nicely, actually divides. So that means if we look at that numerator a little bit more closely, x squared minus x minus 6, is this a factorable numerator? Or tri is it a factorable trinomial? In fact, you can hit pause, try it out, and come back. We find that it's x minus 3, x plus 2. Well, there's my divisor, and there's my quotient. There's my divisor, there's my quotient. So really, my function was this guy, equals x minus 3 over x plus 2 divided by x minus 3. And you might say, well, what's the problem with that? The fact is, this doesn't create an asymptote doesn't create an asymptote at all. It does create the situation where at x equals 3, I cannot plot a point still. Why? Because this still creates a denominator of 0. So it's still undefined. The function itself as a whole is undefined. But what it does create is a discontinuity. And a discontinuity in uh, different parlance, some people, or actually not some people, um, lots of people refer to it as a whole. And so if I just do this, this thing looks sort of like uh, this guy. Actually, well, let's graph it on Desmos first. Let's pop it down here. Let's get rid of that guy. Let's go y equals, what was it, x squared, x squared 
minus x minus 6 divided by, and I did this poorly, I have to delete all that stuff. Uh, x divided by x minus tray. Go back up top. Squared minus x minus 6. And so we get this line. Why do we get a line? The line comes from comes from this. It's, it's this guy right here. The line comes from that. So my graph looks like exactly like that line, except there's this thing called a discontinuity. And it looks sort of like this. I'm probably not going to draw a line very well. Uh, plus 2. So if I use that as my uh, intercept and I have a slope of 1, so I guess it looks like this. Okay. But at x equals 3, I have this thing called a discontinuity. And so it's technically just drawn incorrectly. At x equals 3, I have this thing called a hole, called a discontinuity. So when, um, that's going to erase the whole line. Yeah. I get this. I get that. So as close as you can possibly get to 3, 2.999999, da 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 da. And on the other side, 3.0000001 or whatever, you'll have a point to plot. But at exactly the value 3, there is not a, plot to po a point to plot. Nothing. So there's a gap there. And so um, this means that this function is discontinuous. I cannot draw, to put my pencil down and connect all the points on both sides of that. I have to pick my pencil up, jump that gap, and keep drawing. So that's why it, the function is called discontinuous. I cannot draw it continuously with a pencil. It's not really about the pencil, but you get the idea. That's another way to think about it. And so there's this hole or discontinuity. The uh, problem with it, to some extent, your calculator has an issue with it as well. They cannot depict the hole. Because I zoom in, and as you ever get closer, you cannot depict the hole here. So you can't, they can't graph it. But we have to know analytically when I look at it that there in fact is a discontinuity at x equals 3. So that's a special case and that will come up in a problem that you can get in, uh, in the software. So that's an issue. Special, special case number 2. Um, again, it's not something that we're going to look at in this particular subject matter, but anybody that's on the web or if you're interested in looking at it. It's when this when I go to figure out the vertical asymptote, I set this equal to zero because I want to know when x equals what values for x cause the denominator to go to zero. I do this, or I can also factor it, right? x plus i the square root of five, x minus i the square root of five. Yes, I have a complex root, right? When I take the square root of both sides here, I get x equals plus or minus the square root of negative five or plus or minus i radical 5. So my roots are complex. Problem is, we are graphing these functions in the real plane. So those complex numbers don't exist in the real plane. And so what does our function look like? Well, I threw it over here in Desmos. And it looks like that guy. I'm going to look at this clo more closely. Because there are no real values that cause the denominator to go to zero, there are no vertical, there are no vertical asymptotes, none. But we do get this little bump going on, and we still get a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero. Why? Because the denominator in this case had a greater degree than the numerator. So my m was less than n. So it still gives us that y equals zero horizontal asymptote. If I change the degree to cubed, we'll see what happens here. Uh, I want to do that and make that a 3. And so I get a slant asymptote, and the slant asymptote's going to be 3 something or other. I guess I have to do that manually because I didn't do it ahead of time. Stupid me. Because um, I just had the idea to slap that in there. What was it? 3x um, cubed? Because that's the way I added, right? Divided by, oops x squared plus 5. So I'm going to get uh, change colors because I jammed it all up in there. 
And so I want to multiply this times 3x, 3x cubed plus 15x, oh, plus 0x plus 1, subtracting, that's 0, minus 15x plus 1. Uh, I can't divide that, so I get this line at y equals 3x. So that's all it is. So now if I go back to Desmos and I create one last function here, y equals 3 x. Notice how I get this asymptote and my function approaches it from both sides but I get no vertical asymptote again because x squared plus 5 does not have any real roots so it does not have any real x's that will cause the denominator to go to 0. So I just I just think it's cool. So uh, and we can also, if we know enough and we think about it enough, we can predict what this thing's going to look like, right? I didn't know where the slant asymptote was, but I just did the division, got the quotient, said y equals 3x, boom, there it was. So I hope this, watching these, helps you understand that there is, there are things that can help you understand, that if you understand, can help you sort this stuff out instead of just memorizing a whole bunch of stuff. And this lesson is the one that I think is a linchpin on that. You can memorize that, uh, this whole topic of rational functions. You can memorize that table and get away with doing stuff, but if you learn it and understand it, you don't have to memorize the stuff. All right? Thanks much. Thanks for listening. Bye.